Hey everybody, I'm Natalia Bonner and I have got a fun quilt to share with you today. So this darling quilt is one that was made by my client, Kathy, and obviously I did some custom machine quilting on it for her. The pattern is one of the really cute Carolyn Friedlander patterns and a lot of hand work went into this, but it's really modern. So a really fun quilt for me to machine quilt. So as I walk you through this video today, I am going to walk a little bit step by step and show you in detail some of the machine quilting that I've done here. If you do want to see more videos like this where I go in detail and walk you step by step through my process of machine quilting, do check out my Patreon page. I'll post the link below, but it's patreon.com slash Natalia Bonner. Over on my Patreon page, I share a lot of videos where I walk you step by step through my entire process, you know, starting out with how do I quilt this quilt and walk you through the whole entire process of quilting a quilt. So it's a really great place to see a lot of quilts and how I quilt them and hopefully be inspired on your own machine quilting journey. But before we get to the actual quilting and all the yummy stuff here, I do want to tell you a few of the products that I'm using on this quilt. So on the top, I am using So Fine, and I will use mul multiple thread colors on this quilt because that's just what it needs. On the bottom, however, I did stick with one thread color across the whole entire quilt backing, the color number 624 bottom line. The batting that I'm using on this quilt is one layer of the Quilter Stream wool batting. You can pick up all of these products over on our website, peaceandquilt.com. But in the meantime, let's get stitching. So here's this cool quilt before I begin any machine quilting. Now, when it comes to a quilt like this, it's really modern. I want to do custom machine quilting on it. How am I going to treat it? What kind of quilting am I going to do on it? That's going to play off of really what's going on here already. So a lot of times, and particularly with a quilt like this, I'm going to look beyond the seams and I'm going to look at the fabric. With this quilt, because it's so modern and there's a lot going on, I want to just really play with what's already going on there with the fabric. So let's take, for example, the upper left corner. You can see that there are little blocks that are applied onto, little ivory colored blocks that are applied onto gray backgrounds. And the gray background, I know it's difficult to see in video format, but it actually has kind of like a grid design on printed on it and then you can see a little bit more clearly on the ivory that it has like a cross hatching design so on that block in particular i look at that and i think you know what let's just play what's already with what's already going on there let's quilt right on top of those printed lines so that's what i'm going to do and i'll continue on with things like that throughout the whole entire quilt i will walk you through each of the blocks as i'm quilting them and hopefully inspire each of you on your own machine quilting journey but like I did mention, if you do want more inspiration videos like this that take you more in depth into the machine quilting process, do hop over to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Natalia Bonner for a lot more in-depth inspiration. So this is that section that I'd mentioned, the upper left portion of the quilt as I had it laying there. And I am playing with what's already going on. So you can see here, that I'm stitching right on top of those marked lines on the fabric. By doing this, because the quilt is so modern, but it's also has a lot going on, I feel like if I'm going to go through and add different geometric lines and things like that, that maybe go in different directions, I might actually, my stitching might fight with the actual quilt itself. And I don't want to do that. I want Kathy's piecing and her applique work to become the focal. That's what deserves all the attention. So that's what I'm going to do.
So I'm continuing on. I still am using that gray color of thread through this top section. Now, as I continue to work my way through this quilt, there are sections that have darker blues and a little bit of orange, some other colors. So I will switch thread colors, other colors of so fine, and use those in the sections where it's most appropriate. So in this particular section, I'm using the largest curve on my four in one machine quilting ruler and adding curved lines that echo out. So you'll see here that I stitched the first curve using those places as my traveling stitches. So I stitch the first curved line, then I travel up a half an inch, and then I'll line my four in one machine quilting ruler up so that the previous stitch line is right underneath the first marked line on the acrylic on my four in one machine quilting ruler. By doing that, I don't have to go through and add any extra marking to my quilt top. I'm just using the markings on my machine quilting ruler and the side of my foot as my guide. And I can end up with a really fabulous overall design. So something that makes this section here that I'm quilting really pretty cool and creates a lot of interest, you can see, yes, it is simple back and forth curved lines, but I'm alternating the direction of those lines as I do my stitching. So in the first section, I was stitching what appears to be kind of horizontal. And now that I moved on to the next section, my lines appear to be more vertical. And I'll continue that alternating directions, really creating a lot of interest with really simple lines.
As I continue with that design, working on that same block, the one with the applique curved design, they remind me of maybe like mountains, something like that. Then I'm going to add something completely different, but still similar, still kind of along those same lines to the background section that's next to that. So I'll go back to using my four in one machine quilting ruler, or I could use one of my other rulers, the trailer or the inside out ruler. This time I'm going to stitch lines that are one inch apart. Still keeping a nice design, but by adjusting my spacing just a little bit, I'm creating just a little bit more interest. So another awesome feature on the four in one machine quilting ruler, the markings are measured from my needle position on this ruler. So as I'm stitching, I use the one inch marking on the ruler, line that up with my previous stitch line. By doing that, all of my lines are always spaced one inch apart and I don't have to worry at all about doing any marking. Now another trick or something that's super helpful to me when I'm doing my machine quilting, when I'm doing straight lines like this, I'm most comfortable pushing the ruler away from my body. I like to hold the ruler so that it's closer to my body versus behind the foot. So I'm going to start with this background filler at a point that's as close to my body as I can get, holding the ruler, like you can see here, it's towards my body, and then pushing away. Moving on to the next section, you can see here that we've moved on to this little section with the cross-hatching background design and then the three little, or not three, the little gold lines that are in, applicated into there. So again, I'm playing on the fabric here. I want to do something that plays off of what's already going on. I want to add to the quilt, not take away. So I'm still sticking with that gray thread. It'll blend really nicely here. And I'm stitching right along those lines. As I stitch along those lines, I do stitch along and outline around those nice applique pieces. I prefer to outline around pieces, you know, whether it's the first thing I do or if it's as I'm going. I just feel like it really helps separate them. It helps define them from any spaces, any quilting that's around them.
As I continue on, now I'm going to begin stitching in this kind of yellow colored block. On this particular block, I'm going to, there's a lot of open space here, so I'm really going to create some cool machine quilting here, again, with simple straight lines. So, stitch in the ditch is always my friend. I like to stitch in the ditch wherever possible, and then go with my quilting designs from there. Now, I don't believe that it's right to do it first or last. For me, it's really something that I do as I'm quilting. Sometimes it's first, sometimes it's last. So as I continue quilting here, you'll see that I'm going to start out stitching some angular lines. Now, these lines don't have any particular angle when it comes to this. There's no measurement here. I just laid down my ruler and stitched an angular line. From there, I'm going to start adding echoes or lines that are coming off of that one in the same direction. So you can see they're all going to be a half an inch apart. I'll stitch one line, travel along the ditch, and then stitch another one and repeat that multiple times until I feel like I've traveled a good amount of space. When I feel like I'm at a place where I can stop and change directions, then I'll stitch over to the opposite side, creating a new angle. This time I'm going to kind of do an angle that contrasts with the ones I've already stitched. By doing that, by going in a contrasting direction, then it almost creates kind of like this woven look with these straight lines, and it's really cool. So do notice that I travel along the ditch when I get to one side. When I get to the other side, I'll stitch along my previous stitch line as my traveling place. Now, because I'm using really nice fine thread, like I mentioned, so fine, available for purchase on my website, peaceandquilt.com, because I'm using such fine thread, when I do have to stitch along my previous stitch line a couple of times, it doesn't totally point it or stand out or become the focal. You almost don't even notice when you take a step back that I've stitched along the line a couple of times. Now I'll repeat that process, working back and forth, creating these woven looking lines, awesome background filler until I've completed that design. I will stitch around, outlining around each of those applique pieces as I reach them as well.
So something else that's fun to do on a design like this is add shadow designs. So on this particular section of the quilt, there's these fun arched little elements that are applique onto there. And I'm going to add echo stitching around those to just make them pop out and really play on those. But in some of the negative space, I thought it would be fun just to stitch as if there were a couple more of those. You know, it creates a fun modern look. I'll add echo stitching around the top of those and really have an awesome faux scallop type design there. Now, because I do like to create a lot of interest, because I do one design around a particular place, doesn't mean that's what I'm going to quilt around every single section, especially with a quilt like this where the shapes are different sizes and different fabrics and things like that. So sometimes I'm going to add in simple straight line quilting. Sometimes I'm going to add in a little bit of a curve. <laughs> 